In this lesson, we are going to answer some exercises and applications of differentiation. So suppose a particle is moving along a horizontal line with its position function given by the following. So here S is in meters and P is of course greater than or equal to zero. We assume that the direction is to the right of the origin. Let us determine the intervals when the particle is to the right of the origin. So again, what does it mean? It means that our S of T is greater than zero. So we already have our factorization here of S of T. So how do we solve this one? We just make a table of values, although of course the T minus one squared will not really do so much because it will always be positive but still I will incorporate that so we have this one will be 0 when t equals 1 t minus 4 when be zero, will be 0 when t is equal to 4 so this is our critical number so I will divide my real number line here so for t minus 1 squared it will always be positive everywhere and for t minus 4 it will be positive when you are on the right of 4 and negative when you are on the left of 4 so therefore s of t will be negative here it will be negative here and it will be positive here but then again what is it that we want we want that our s of t is positive and therefore it occurs at so this is for number one so it occurs when t is greater than four next for number two what do we want again we want the functions v of t and a of t so our v of t is just the derivative of s of t so therefore that is 3t squared minus 12t plus 9 and our a of t the acceleration is just the derivative of the velocity function so that's 6t minus 12. Next for number 3 we want to determine the intervals when the particle is moving to the left moving to the left means that v of t is negative so in order to do that we have to uh, make our table of signs for v of t so first let me just factor this v of t this can be factored as 3 times t minus 3 t minus 1 so therefore this is for t minus 3 t minus 1 and this is 0 when t equals 3 t minus 1 is 0 when t equals 1 and then for my table of signs so therefore this product is positive negative and then positive but we want v of t to be less than 0 so therefore it occurs here and th what is this interval our t is between 1 and 3. Next, for number 4, we want to find all the intervals when the particle is speeding up. Now, what does it mean when the particle is speeding up? It means that a of t and v of t have the same sign. Or, you can also view this as the product a of t, v of t is positive okay so for v of t so let me just put here my v of t so our critical numbers as we have seen in number three would be one and three and then for a of t it's 6 6 t minus 12 so therefore that is 6 times t minus 2 so the critical number would be 2 so this is for t minus 2 and then I will divide my real number line here and as we have seen in number 3 everything to the right 
to the left of 1 is positive. And then ev everything between 1 and 3, it's negative, negative. And then everything to the right of 3, V of T is positive. And then for A of T, we have T minus 2. So everything to the right of 2, T minus 2 will be positive. Everything to the left of 2 would be negative. So therefore, where will we have the same sign? It will occur here. So this and this one. And what will be this interval? So we have t is between 1 and 2. And the interval t is greater than 3. Next, let us evaluate the limit of cosecant x minus cosine x over x sine x as x approaches 0. Now, Notice that we can write cosecant x over x as cosecant is just the reciprocal of sine x. So we have x sine x, that is cosecant x over x, minus cosine x over x sine x. Okay, so we can put this into a single expression because they have the same denominator. So that is limit of 1 minus cosine x over x sine x. If we view this, if we just substitute, the limit of the numerator is 1 minus cosine 0, which is 0, and then the denominator is 0 also. Now if we use, let's try to use L'Hopital's rule here. If we use L'Hopital's rule here, what will we obtain? We will get limit of the derivative of 1 minus cosine x is sine x. Because the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. And then for the denominator, we will use the product rule. So we copy x. Derivative of sine x is cosine x plus copy sine x. The derivative of x is 1. And then as x approaches 0. However, when you do this, it is still of the form 0 over 0. So therefore, it does not work. If we will use L'Hopital's rule again, it will be even more um, difficult because if you will look at your denominator, um, it involves two terms already and one of those terms involve a, um, a product. Alright, so what... What should we do? We will try another method. So if what we will do is we have a 1 minus cosine x and a sine x in the denominator. So what I will do is I will multiply both numerator and denominator by 1 plus cosine x. Can you now see why am I doing that? Okay, it's because I want to have my 1 minus cosine squared x in the numerator. And then I have x sine x times 1 plus cosine x. And what is that? That is equal to 1 minus cosine squared x is sine squared x. So that's limit of sine x over x times 1 plus cosine x. So if we now get the limit of the numerator, so it's 0. And in the denominator, we have 0 also. So therefore, this is of the form 0 over 0. And this is where I will use L'Hopital's rule. So for L'Hopital's rule, the limit of the, the derivative of sine x is cosine x. Then for the denominator, I will make use of the product rules because this is the product of x and 1 plus cosine x. So copy x. And then derivative of 1 plus cosine x is negative sine x. Plus copy 1 plus cosine x. Derivative of x is 1. And then I will now get the limit as x approaches 0. So limit of the numerator, so that's cosine of 0, which is 1. 
And then in the denominator, I have 0 and then 1 plus cosine 0. And therefore, this is 1 half. Next, let us evaluate the limit of x over x plus 2 raised to the x as x approaches infinity. So notice that the limit of the base, you have x over x plus 2. They have the same degree. This is just a rational expression with the same degree. And therefore, the limit as x approaches infinity is just equal to the leading coefficient to the leading coefficient of the numerator over the leading coefficient of the denominator so therefore it's 1 and then what is the limit of the exponent x approaches infinity so the form is 1 raised to infinity so therefore this is one of our indeterminate forms so how do we do this first we get the limit of the ln okay we want to get the limit of the ln of x over x plus 2 x as x approaches infinity. Therefore, that is x. I can bring down the, the exponent x approaches infinity. Now, if we get the limit, so x here approaches infinity, and then our x over x plus 2, this one approaches 1. But then ln of 1 is 0, right? So therefore, this whole thing approaches 0. So our form is 0 times infinity. So what is our strategy whenever we have this indeterminate form? We put one of the factors in the denominator by writing it as ln of x over x plus 2 over 1 over x, right? And therefore, this will now be of the form the limit of the numerator is 0. We have seen that earlier. And then for the denominator, 1 over x, since x approaches infinity, then 1 over x approaches 0. So we have 0 over 0. Okay, so we can now use L'Hopital's rule here. Let me first write ln of x over x plus 2 as ln x minus ln of x plus 2 all over 1 over x. Do you see why am I doing that? Because if I want to make use of L'Hopital's rule, I don't want to use chain rule in getting the limit of the numerator. Alright, so at least now it's easier to get the derivative okay so derivative of the numerator is 1 over x minus the derivative of ln x plus 2 is just 1 over x plus 2 then the derivative of 1 over x is negative 1 over x as x approaches infinity if you do not simplify this what will you get you will get another 0 over 0 right so don't do that so what you need to do is to simplify it first. For the numerator, our LCM is x, x plus 2. So that's x plus 2 minus x. Here I will have times negative x squared over 1. This is as x approaches infinity. I am running off, out of space here. But this is, let me just put it here on top. So that is limit of 2 over x times x plus 2 negative x squared. As x approaches positive infinity. So that's, I can get rid of the x here. Okay, so what do we have here? This is just a rational expression with the same degree and therefore what is this limit as x approaches infinity it's just equal to negative 2 it's the um, leading coefficient of the numerator over 
the leading coefficient of the denominator, negative 2. However, for the final answer, we still have to get e to undo the ln. So for the final answer, it's e to the negative 2. Next, let us find the local linear approximation of f of x equals e to the negative x cos 2x at x equals 0 in order to estimate this value. Now notice that what is this value? This is just f of 0 0.01, right? When you put, when you replace 0, x by 0 0.01, that is this value. So again, just for us to imagine what is happening, we have, let's say, this is the graph, let's say like that, okay? So instead of using the function, we will make use of this um, um, local linear approximation. Okay, so what is the formula for the local linear approximation at x equals 0? So take note that, so this is in general, okay? So this is x0, f of x sub 0. Okay, this is the graph of y equals f of x. So, and this line here has a slope of f prime of x0. And therefore, using the point slope form, it's y minus f of x sub 0 equals the slope, which is f prime of x sub 0 times x minus x sub 0. But of course, our x sub 0 here is 0, right? We want to evaluate it at x equals 0. So what we want is y minus f of 0 equals f prime of 0 times x minus 0. So first we need f of 0. f of 0 is easy to compute. f of 0 is e to the negative 0 cos of 0 e to the 0 is 1, cos of 0 is equal to 1 also. Again, if you forgot that, cos x is equal to e to the x plus e to the negative x over 2, right? Okay, now what about f prime of 0? In order to get f prime of 0, we have to get f prime of x first. So, since we have e to the negative x, cos 2x here, we have to make use of the product rule. So, let us use the product rule. So, first, um, get, copy e to the negative x. The derivative of cos 2x is sinh 2x times 2. And then, copy cos 2x and then derivative of e to the negative x is e to the negative x and then I have a negative here. Alright, so therefore my f prime of 0 is 2 times e to the 0 sinh of 0 minus cos 0 e to the 0. Now, sinh of 0 is 0 minus 1. Cos 0 is 1, so therefore that is negative 1. So our local linear approximation, if we just plug it in, y minus my f of 0 is 1, is equal to our slope is negative 1, then x minus 0. So therefore we have y is equal to negative x plus 1. And therefore, to approximate um, this value over here, we will just replace, we will use this line, replace x by 0 0.01. Okay? This one. Because let's say this is 0 0.01, that part over there. So what do we get? So our y there would be negative 0 0.01 plus 1. So that is 0 0.99. So that is an approximation of that value. Okay. Next, suppose we are given f of x equals 3x minus 5 over e to the 3x. We want to 
determine the x values at which the absolute extrema of f occur in the closed interval. This is the closed interval. First, we need to get f prime of x. So f prime of x, we use the quotient rule. So that's e to the 3x squared. And then low the high, so that's 3 minus high the low, e to the 3x times 3. All right, now notice that in the numerator, you have a common factor of 3 e to the 3x. So this would be 1 minus quantity 3x minus 5, so 3x plus 5 over e to the 3x squared. And therefore, this is 3 here, and then I can cancel 1. e through the e raised to 3x, so I'm just left with e to the 3x here, and then 6 minus 3x. And then we set f prime of x equals 0. We are looking for the critical numbers. So when that is 0, it only means that the numerator is equal to 0, which means that x is equal to 2. And all we have to do now is to compare the values of f of 0, f of 2, and f of 3. Because we are dealing here with a closed interval. f of 0 is negative 5, right? f of 2 is 6 minus 5 over e to the 3 times 2, 6. So that's 1 over e to the 6. And then for f of 3, 9 minus 5, 4 over e to the 3 times 3, 9. So obviously, negative 5 is the smallest. So that will be the minim absolute minimum value. But remember, the absolute minimum value is negative 5. But what do we want? We want the x value. So we say that we have an absolute minimum value at x equals 0. Now, where does the absolute maximum value occur? So it's just a matter of determining which one is bigger. 1 over e to the 6, this one, or 4 over e to the 9. So if we compare 1 over e to the 6 and 4 over e to the 9, I want them to have the same denominator. So I will multiply this by e cubed. So this is e cube over e to the 9. Okay, so which one is bigger? e cube um, e to the 9 or 4 over e to the 9? But e is approximately 2.71. And if we just look at 2, even if it's just 2, 2 cube is greater than 4, right? So e is actually 2.71. It's even bigger, right? So we now know that 1 over e to the 6 is greater than 4 over e to the 9. So we have now absolute maximum value at x equals 2. Next, um, we have a new product, Happy Shalala. It is now available and we are given here the price, demand, and cost functions, P of x and C of x. For the first one, we want to find the marginal revenue for a sale of 150 happy shalala. Okay. So in order to get the marginal revenue, we have to first get the revenue function. And the revenue function is just equal to the price times the number of units. But our price is... 100 plus x over 100 and then times x, which is the number of units.
and therefore our marginal revenue is 100 plus 2x over 100 or x over 50. But we want to find the marginal revenue when x is equal to 150. So what we want is r prime of 150. So that's 100 plus 150 divided by 50. So that is 103. What is the meaning of marginal revenue of 103? It means that for a unit increase in X, our revenue will be up by 103 pesos. Next, let's look at number 2. We want to find the profit function. So the profit function is just the revenue minus the cost. Correct? We already have our revenue, which is 100x plus x squared over 100 minus the cost function. So it's 3,000 minus 50x minus x squared over 50. When we simplify that, we get P of x equals negative x squared over 100 plus 50x minus 3,000. For number three, when the profit is maximum, how many happy shalala are sold? So we want to find x when we obtain the maximum profit. So for the maximum profit, we want p prime of x to be equal to zero our p prime of x so that's negative x over 50 plus 50 so let's set that to zero what do we get we get that x is equal to 2500 so we have to sell 2500 shalalas in order to get the maximum profit next um, suppose that the surface area of a closed cylinder is 54 pi square meters. Determine the base radius of this cylinder if it is to have the largest volume. Now, what is this one? 54 pi, that is the surface area. Surface area of a cylinder. The lateral area is 2 pi r times h. And then the area of the two circles one on top and one below because it is closed. So that is 2 pi r squared. But we are already given that the surface area is 54 pi. So 54 pi is equal to this one. And then, which means that I can simplify this. I can divide both sides by 2 pi. 27 is equal to rh plus r squared. You will get back to that later. What else is given here? Determine the radius. So find r if it is to have the largest volume. So what is the formula for the volume of a cylinder? It's the area of the base. Remember, area of the base times the height. But the area of the base is just a circle. So that's pi r squared times h. What do we do here? We have two variables here, r squared and h. However, if you look at this equation over here, we can, we can um, find h in terms of r, right? So from here, we have that h is equal to 27 minus r squared over r. So we will replace that in this formula. So we have pi r squared times h. And therefore we get that v is equal to pi r times 27 
minus r squared or 27 pi r minus pi r cubed. Okay, we want to maximize the volume, largest volume. So what do we do? So take note here that the volume depends on r. So we will have the largest volume when v prime of r, right, is equal to 0, correct? So first let's get v prime of r. Take note that I, I just wrote it v prime of r because my v just depends on r. So therefore that's 27 pi minus 3 pi r squared. When you set that to 0, we have 27 pi equals 3 pi r squared, which means that r squared is 9, and therefore, we get that r is equal to 3. The radius must be equal to 3 um, meters in order to have the largest volume. For our last example, um, having their friendship ended, Vin left Al by running southward. So let's see what is happening. At a rate of 2 feet per second. And at the same time, Al decided to walk eastwards at a rate of 3 halves feet per second. Determine how fast the distance, this is their distance, between Vin and, Vin and Al is changing after 4 seconds. So what I have here is the general. And then, what do we want? We want how fast the distance between Vin and Al is changing after 4 seconds. So, at t equals 4, how do how does the picture look like? Okay. So, let me just call this variable x. So, what is x here? I will no longer write it down, but based on the, on the figure, it is the distance traveled by Vin. And y is the distance traveled by Al, and then I will let Z be the distance between Al and Vin at any particular time. So what is 2 feet per second? That is how fast Al is walking. So that is dx over dt. So that's how fast x is changing. And dy over dt is... 3 halves. Now you may notice I my dy over dt is positive. Although vin is going downwards, my dy over dt is still positive. Why is that? Remember that my y is the distance traveled. So here y is the distance traveled by vin and as vin keeps on walking that distance becomes larger and larger right so therefore our dy over dt is positive now what do we want we want to find dz over dt when t is equal to 4 okay so let me just draw when t is equal to 4 Al is walking at a rate of 3 halves feet per second. So after 4 seconds, so this is already 6 feet. And what about Al? So that's 2 times, that's 2 feet per second times 4 seconds. So that is 8. This is a right triangle with legs 6, 8, and therefore this is 10. That is from Pythagorean theorem, right? And we already have an idea also that that will be our equation um, relating x, y, and z. So by Pythagorean theorem, our equation is x squared plus y squared equals z squared. And then when we get the derivative with respect to t, we get 2x dx over dt plus 2y dy over dt is equal to 2z dz over dt. I can divide everything by 2 and I will replace my dx over dt and dy over dt. So I now have dx over dt is 2. So I have 2x plus dy over dt is 3 halves. So that's 3y over 2 
is equal to z dz over dt. Now, when t is equal to 4, so at t equals 4, we have that x equals 6, y equals 8, and z equals 10. And we will just plug it in here. Okay, so we have 2 times 6 plus 3 halves times y is equal to 10 times dz over dt. So we have 12 plus 12 is equal to 10 dz over dt, which means that dz over dt is 24 over 10 or 2.4.